Hey guys, this is Eric Weingart with Weingartner Racing. Uh, I thought I'd do a little video today to hopefully try to answer one of the comments that keeps popping up on almost every video about flow numbers and stuff. And it's usually a comment from a guy that says, I don't care what the head flows at one inch valve lift. Um, I will never have a cam that sees that. Or the other comment is, the um, valve crosses the lower lift points twice and the peak only once. I only care about the peak numbers, okay? Um, I'll, I'll, I will address that because um, there's some issues with it, not necessarily that's wrong, but something to think about. Uh, first off, I have two flow benches, the Sanya's uh, Digital 680 and the Super Flow 750. Both are calibrated, but they read slightly different. However, for the most part, um, they are pretty good about showing trends with it. And I will say this, flow benches are tools, they're not absolutes. You can have a head that flows really good at one uh, lift of, I say 600 valve lift, and another head that flows less at 600 valve lift, but one can make more than the other, even though the flow bench would tell you differently. Because there's other things that the flow bench can say about different points and airspeed and stuff that would indicate which head might be better or might not be. These are used as tools. Great engine builders, really good ones, rarely ever turn them on. Now, whenever I port a set of heads for customers, I give them flow numbers just because I want them to also use them in case they needed to spec a camshaft because sometimes camshaft guys need those. And also it's a tool that they can use too, but it is not by any means absolutes. So let's address this question. So what I have here, and I posted this video before about the comparison I had done between the Brodix and the AFR 245, the small block Chevy stuff. These are the flow numbers for the intake side for the AFR 245. So these are the AFR 245 numbers. Now, you might say, what are you looking for as a head porter whenever you flow the head? Well, it's a tool for me. The number I look at is 400, 600, and one inch. And I'll go through why I think each one's important. I look at the 400 one because this is really where the port's trying to transition from the valve job creating the flow and the port itself. So if this number is low, you, sometimes it's related to the chamber, the port itself, and the valve job. So there's a lot to look at from this. And usually when I see a strong number here, the head's going to do fairly well, as long as this number and this number is good too. So the next number I look at is the uh, 600. And the reason for that is the valve job is becoming less important and the port's more important. So it gets me an idea of how the port's looking, what it's going to be doing. If this number and this number is good, typically you've got a good runner. The last one I look at is the one inch valve lift number. Now, several people say, why do you even flow them to one inch? I've never run a cam that has got a one inch. Um, it seems pointless. It just, you're trying to, you, there's no reason for it. Well, there are some people that do run bigger cams. Like I think some pro stock guys are 1.2 lift and above. I think the biggest thing I've ever run is 980. Um, but still that's at peak. So you're correct. You're only going to see that one time. But what this number tells me is how stable is my port. And what I mean by that is, um, this flow bench flows 28 inches of water and that's what it's pulling. And that's where it gets its numbers from. On a live engine, you pull way more vacuum than what my flow benches could possibly do. So um, what I mean by this is if the number backs up, which this one does, it went from 327 really to a 320, I need to ask myself, why did that happen? Now, there are several things that could happen. You could have where the valve is now at a position where there's a restriction because of the chamber is shrouding the valve. Um, but the most common one I have seen is because the airspeed is too quick. There's a short side curve, that's where the valve, or the, it's curving over the short side and going into the chamber. Sorry about that, my big thumb actually hit the button and turned off my video recording, so I'm gonna continue on. What I mean by that is the curve that goes over, that's where the short side is, it goes over and the air goes into the chamber, that's the short side. What can happen is the air speed could be too fast and what, what the air will do is when at lower air speeds, it will make the turn and go into the chamber and everything's fine. But as air speed increases, uh, what happens is the air can no longer make the turn and so it jumps the short side for uh, better sake and what happens with that is it's blocking part of the airflow path and flow goes down just like with this AFR head here. This is a perfect example. The valve is not shrouded from the chamber. What's happening is the short side's too steep. There's not enough area there but really it's too steep. So it wants to jump the short side and hence it flows less there. Now you, again, why do you care? Why do I care what it does there? My valve's not one inch. Because on a live engine, you'll see way more airspeed than you saw here. So um, say you're at 630 lift or whatever. You're really close to this. Um, on my flow mention, it says it flows 312. 
Well, what happens if I increase the airspeed, you know, like in a live running engine cranking 7,000 RPMs? Well, the airspeed's faster than what my float it at here. So that same airspeed that caused it to jump here on my flow bench will happen way earlier in the lift curve here. So although it says it's 312, in a live engine racing, the air is too fast, it jumps the short side, it ends up flowing in a live engine less than 312 CFMs. This is where this becomes a tool. And you can have a head that flows good on the flow bench, but a head that might flow less here, but more stable all the way up, makes more power. So that's the reason why I look at it. It's not that I, like, I gotta have a one inch valve lift to take care of it. It's, I'm looking at this as a reference and just to see what's going on in the port. Now remember, this isn't the only reason they can cause it to back up, but typically it's, it's a pretty good factor. So something just to be aware of when I'm looking at that number. So just because it, backs up here, it's probably gonna back up here in a live engine, and you'll see less flow and make less power because of it. If we look at, for instance, this is a prime example, pull my street log here. Uh, right. uh, this is the intake flow for an LS7. Now, my software does a really good job of doing a graph. So this is the lifts, and this is the flow. If you look at 600 lift, this is the LS7 flows its peak, and then it drops down, does the same thing. Now, LS heads, for the most part, have other issues that can cause it. But the stock LS7, its short side's pretty steep, too. And this is the stock one I, that CNC ported from the factory. And if you notice, it backs up. Now, you might say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. They make a ton of power. Well, I think the LS7 only made like 500, by the way. So you took 360 CFM to make something that the small block Chevys did with 250. Um, but anyway, the reason why it's backing up is an airspeed issue, at least in this one. So what you have to say is, well, why did they do that? Why would GM do this? Well, GM had different things. They wanted high airspeed because they knew that for the most part, people, even with their Corvettes, will be at park throttle and this gives a better park throttle response. And also they had to deal with emissions and fuel mileage. So what happens is they try to make a port that would be uh, less stable at high RPMs because in their mind, they needed something for emissions and other standards that they were trying to focus on. But if you could get a head to keep flowing, even if it's say 361 and kept that same number all the way through, you are going to make more power, even if it flows no better here, but keeps the same flow here, you are going to make more power than if you just had a head like this. So hopefully that answers some of the question or at least addresses that issues. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave that. Oh, by the way, one further thing. This line right here is the exhaust port flow. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you if you ever See, on a flow bench, an exhaust port that starts drilling down, you have major issues because a flow bench uh, does not come anywhere near to the same pressures or air speeds seen on a live engine on the exhaust port at all close. So if it's backing up on a flow bench for the exhaust port, you have major issues that need to be addressed. Uh, if you could tell the LS1 keeps flowing, and most of them do, but there are some that do not and drop off, and major issues. I'm thinking of you, you stock four guys. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments.